It's Akito. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how to make an Akito type beat. First things first, sort out some packet. Always got time for noodles. Chuck in the egg. Happy lad. Once I find a kick I like, I'll throw it into Ableton's drum rack and get a little loop going. I'll adjust it until I'm happy with the pattern and groove. I tend to keep my kicks separate as they're such a large part of the overall mix. I'll adjust the start and end points of the kick by dragging them. This will make sure that the sample starts bang on and will usually make them sound tighter. It also gets rid of any extra noise on the tail of the sound. I'll move the end point and adjust the fade out to my preference. This can always be changed later too, so I'll do it quickly now and keep it moving. I'll also tune the kick drum to the key of the song. This is something I'll go into much more detail later on in the video, so keep watching. Once I got the kick sorted, I'm gonna move on to the percussion. The process of picking sounds is the same as the kick. I'll audition samples by flicking through them in the sample folders, dragging and dropping them into my drum rack. I'm also going to adjust the start and end points of the percussion sounds as I want them to sound short and tight. This will also get rid of some of the natural reverb of the sounds. I'll probably process them with some reverb in the mix downstage, so I tend to cut the sounds shorter earlier in the music making process. I'll add and remove sounds as I go on. Usually I'll keep extra loops I've created and use them for additional changes to give the track variation.
Once I'm happy enough with the drums, I'll begin to tune them individually to the key of the song. For this demonstration, I'll work in the key of A minor. So the notes will be A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I can't tell the note of a playing piano, let alone a drum sample, so I'm going to need the help of the Spectrum plugin within Ableton to find the predominant frequency of these sounds. Once the sound is playing and you are hovered over the spectrum with your mouse, it will show you the frequency, note and octave. There are a few ways to change the note and pitch of your drums. I tend to use the transpose feature in the drum rack. Once I adjust the transpose, I'll check back on the spectrum to see if it's hitting my desired note. I'll do this for each sound, putting it on solo, checking the spectrum, then adjusting the transpose, going back and forth until I'm happy with what I'm seeing and hearing. Now I'll play the drum loop to you again, this time with the tuned drums and also with the detuned drums. Next I'll show you how I use Ableton Sampler finding the note of the sample, then setting the root key. And lets you be quite musical with your samples as it's laid out on a piano roll. The sampler's default root key is set to C3. So what I'll do is add some hi-hats at C3. I'll add enough of them so I can quickly find out what the note is in the Spectrum plugin. I can see that the hi-hats peak frequency is at A7. So I'll adjust the root key to A. If all went well, then the spectrum will now show that the hi-hat is playing at C8. I'll also test it one more time to be sure.
This is super handy if you're making pitch perfect rap or drill beats with rolling hi-hats. I also use the same technique for a lot of drum rolls and fills. I have no knowledge on music theory myself. I usually just follow my ears, but the simplest way I've found out over the years to create quick melodies in key is this method. We'll stick with the A minor key as the drums are already tuned to it. Once I've loaded the sound and created a new MIDI block, I'll add all the white notes from A to G. I'll also duplicate these same notes up the octaves. Once I've done that, I'll select all the notes and drag them out of the block. I'm gonna hit fold. This then allows us to only use those notes within that key. To try and make the xylophone sound slightly more natural, I'll adjust the volume of the individual hits and unquantize some of the notes, trying to emulate how a human would play it. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. It can also work quite well on drums, adding swing and a human touch. As the melody is really bright, I'm gonna add a bit of halftime to it. This is definitely one of my go-to plugins. That's it, hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe to the channel to see more in the future. Until next time, take care.